A political war of words breaking out overnight after Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance weighed in on the Georgia school shooting. The Kamala Harris answer to this is to take law-abiding American citizens' guns away from them. Clearly, strict gun laws is not the thing that is going to solve this problem. I don't like that this is a fact of life. But if, you're, if you are a psycho and you want to make headlines, you realize that our schools are soft targets. And we have got to bolster security at our schools. Vice President Harris focusing on the fact of life comment, writing, School shootings are not just a fact of life. It doesn't have to be this way. Vance responding, instead of addressing her own failures, she lies about what I said. Harris's running mate Tim Walls also on the attack, calling the Vance comments pathetic and campaigning in the key swing state of Pennsylvania. I think it's a brilliant quote by your great governor, Josh Shapiro. And I hear him say this. Whenever Donald Trump's talking about America, he talking America. While both presidential candidates are focusing on the economy this week, Mr. Trump promising to establish a government efficiency commission that would audit the federal government to cut waste, an idea floated to him by controversial tech billionaire and Trump supporter Elon Musk. And Elon, because he's not very busy, has agreed to head that task force. Musk writing, I look forward to serving America if the opportunity arises, though any official role in a Trump administration would likely raise conflicts of interest because Musk owns companies that have major contracts with the government. Among Mr. Trump's other economic plans, higher tariffs on imports and eliminating taxes on Social Security benefits and tips, a proposal recently embraced by Harris. She is actually copying a lot of my plan. In fact, we're going to send her a MAGA cap sometime in the next week. About Mr. Trump's plan to increase tariffs on imports, Harris has slammed that as a, quote, Trump tax that would cost American consumers. Mr. Trump, we should note, also yesterday warned that a Harris presidency would lead this country into what he called a 1929 depression. But you'll remember he said the same thing during the last campaign against Joe Biden, a prediction that proved wrong. Hoda. Peter, so in the meantime, there's a debate to get prepared for both candidates, I would imagine, busy this weekend. How do things stand? Yeah, that's right. So the debate, as you know, just four days away now. And the rules here are going to be a lot like those we saw in the Biden-Trump debate earlier this summer. For the candidates, that means no pre-written notes allowed, no questions to each other. Only the moderators get to ask the questions. And the mics are going to be muted when it is not their turn to speak. Harris, we're told, hunkering down yesterday in Pittsburgh for a prep session, expected to do more of the same there this weekend. Mr. Trump, for his part, is expected to be back in a federal courtroom in New York City again today as he tries to challenge the that massive jury verdict finding him liable for sexual abuse and defamation against the writer E. Jean Carroll. Hoda. All right, Peter, thank you so much. Meet the Press, by the way, we'll have a lot more in this critical week ahead. Moderator Kristen Welker sitting down for exclusive interviews with Senator Bernie Sanders and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. That's all this Sunday on Meet the Press. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.